Right, so this uh, may be something you, you remember. This is the uh, one of those video camera modules which died. So I'm going to have a little bit of an investigation to see what's going on here. Hopefully, it's something simple. So I've got power onto it. Um, I'm just going to do some little checks to see if I can identify if there's an issue with the voltages or um, some other thing like that. Now. The input comes through these wires here. These are control circuitry because it's got a, um, a little joystick thing on it. Let's get my eye little um, stand. Hold on a second. Let's get this thing. Use this. Make it a bit easier. We shall see if uh, I can do this or not. If it's not touching components, I think it is. Just sit up here instead. Go. should be right now okay so like I said the power comes in these wires here so let's do some probing around and uh, we'll see if we can identify if there's a problem with voltages somewhere so that's negative there and positive there let's check those first yep that's definitely there that looks like a fuse that's there and there, damn, I was hoping it was going to be that. It's not that. So, what else is there? There must be voltage regulators and stuff like that on here. So, um, let's see if we can find them. Let's just adjust this camera slightly. Get a bit better. Hopefully. Okay. So, let's have a poke around. Um, three, lead, three lead components was a good bit. 10 volts there, 9 volts there, or not for 9, it's basically 10 right round, so it's probably not that. 8 volts there, nothing there, 10 volts there. So that is marked as a 78L T50, it looks like. Might be 5Q. So I think it's a That's interesting actually, if that's, that's what it says. That's 8 volts here, not 5 volts. Oh, this chip here is hot. That chip there is getting hot. Let's just uh, get my thermal camera out. I haven't used that in a while, I'll be right back. Okay, thermal camera. Um, if you haven't seen this before, look at my previous videos. I actually did one where I repaired this because I purchased it and it's faulty from new. I actually got money back on that, it's quite good. Anyway, um, so let's have a look. And there you go. Straight away you can see there's a big hot spot right there. I'm actually way too close to it, so... Um, yeah. There's a big hot spot. So I put my finger on it. Okay, so there's a hospital right there on the chip. There's also another one just over here, a bit further up. Who is that one? If you've probably been trying to work this close, it's quite hard to try and actually find where it is. So, yeah, there's two hotspots here. There's a capacitor. Let's try and zoom in a bit. So, that is hot. And I think, try and find it. Where is the other one? Ouch, yes. Right, that capacitor just there is also really hot. So that cap and that chip are hot. So, let's turn the camera back off again. So, yeah. Um, why are they getting hot? That's the question. And what's that capacitor? I mean, that chip's not that hot. It's fairly warm, but that cap's also really hot. So I'm not quite sure which way around the issue occurs. So let's zoom back out. So what can I tell from this? Well, let's have a look.
think that's the ground that side, yes it is. And that's half a volt. So it's more heat from other places too. I believe that capacitor there is failed, wherever that cap is. I might just try desoldering it and um, see if that voltage comes up. Right, let's get the soldering iron fired up. This has some packages turned up in the mail too. One of them I'm actually tempted to open because I think I know what it is. Um, it might help with this particular job, but I, I want to save it for mailbags. I'm a bit conflicted there. Right, I'm going to take that cap capacitor off. Um, it looks like it's a smoothing cap of some kind. Um, I don't know what it is. But it does appear to be uh, faulty. So I just need to get this all heated up. My iron was up fairly quickly. It's not like a super duper iron or anything. But, um, yeah. Get some heat to both sides. Nudge it would be helpful. Come on, come off the board. Oh, come on. I might have to uh, do this a little differently. Might have to blob it. Of a mess, but it might work. Come on. There we go. It's one side off, that's good enough. Alright, let's retest it. Put that in. And let's see if the voltage is changing the other side. Before I was getting half a volt, now I'm getting 0.6 of a volt. It hasn't really changed anything. That chip's still very hot. Yeah, so it didn't really change anything. So it probably isn't that capacitor. Probably that chip. So it's likely to be no good. Well, I've reattached that capacitor. I used the hot air station this time, which is probably what she used to take it off in the first place. And, um, I thought I'd just have a look on this side of the board as well. All right, so let's see what we get. Um, that should be negative there. Let's double check. Yep, twelve volts here. It's fine. So let's have a look around. What we got here? Three volts across there. Three volts, which is probably fine. Half a volt on that one. I don't know, that's well, 3.3 .3 volts, it's probably the, the voltage it runs off, so... Um, we've also got some transistors here. A lot of standard transistors, don't look anything special. Yeah. So, I don't know, I can't really tell anything from that. Which is a bit of a disappointing video. Oh well. Could sit here try and trace it out. It goes through a diode there. I can see that. Pretty sure I checked that already. Just want to make sure. It's jumping up and down. Interesting. Voltage is jumping. That's in. That's out. That's dropping. That voltage has dropped. I wonder if I've started cooking something. Still very hot around here.
So I might have checked for a faulty component. Is checking resistor the voltage drops across resistors. Because if you've got high current going through that resistor, um, you get a big drop on each side. Right? So you might have you know five volt going in and one volt coming out, for example, you know. Um, sometimes things are designed to be that way, but um, not always. Sometimes it's a good way of finding where a fault is, where the excessive current is. But uh, right now I'm not having much luck with this. Looks like it runs at 3.3 volts anyway, <laughs> I can tell you that much. But yeah, it's not really, uh, it's not playing ball. And that is definitely getting hot around here. So yeah, I think I'm going to have to call this one a no-go. A failed repair. I'm pretty sure that's stuff. So, oh well, never mind. It's worth a little play. Catch you later.